Exercise 8B, we're going to work on frequency tables and tallies. This is very similar to what you have done in the part do not throw. Age. Oh yes. Yes. This is all recorded, AJ. Next time you watch it, AJ just threw. All right, here we go. Frequency tables and tallies. We've got 8B and 8C. 8C, uh, you'll be looking at graphs. So you're going to be changing these tables here into a graph. For now, you're learning to construct a table and then how to interpret from the table. This is all under the topic of statistics. Okay, so you're learning statistics here. So here we go. What's an example? Let's have a look at this table here. Okay, so the table shows survey results for students' favorite colors. Classify the following as true or false. Can someone call AJ in, please? AJ. AJ. Not bad. Thank you, AJ. So you've got a table color and frequency. So classify the following as true or false. So A, looking at the table on the side, is it true that five people chose red as their favorite color? Is it true or false? True, because we can see that red, we have a frequency of five. Okay, so that indicates that there are five students who nominated red as their favorite color. So we'd say true. The skill that you're picking up here is to be able to read the table. Okay, and then the question is, how do you construct the table? And we use what we call tallies. And you would have done this in primary school in tallying, right? Here we go. Let's look at the next one. B, nine people chose orange as their favorite color. Is this true or false? Let's go with Cooper. True or false? Nine people chose orange as their favorite color. False, correct. C. <coughs> Own up. Integrity and honesty. Well, it's the same thing. Thank you. Integrity and honesty. Thank you, Ryder. Next one, C. Blue is the favorite color of three people. Is that true or false? Let's go with Ivy. Blue is favorite, is the favorite color of three people. True is correct. Very good. D. More people chose green than orange as their favorite color. Let's go with AJ. D. That is false. Very good. So clearly we are able to read from a tab table. We're now going to do an example. So I'm going to do two examples. There are only a few questions I selected because, again, I want you to do questions that you don't know how to do. If you know how to do them, you move forward. So that's why there are two exercises for this session. It's 8B and then 8C. Okay, I'm going to do 8B first. 8C, there are just a couple of things that when you're constructing, it is important uh, for you to note when you're constructing frequency graphs, okay? But here we go, let's have a look at this example here. You got a different car colors or different car colors along a quiet road are noted. Convert the following tally into a frequency table. What you have here is called a tally table. We normally note, and actually I thought everyone knows how to do tallies, but I've learned even with my adult friends that actually some people don't have ever done tallies. So, traditionally when we do tally tables, after you do four dashes, so one, two, three, four, the fifth one, you go through a line. Do you know why we do that? It's easier to count in fives, multiples of fives, okay? So, uh, I, I was surprised when I was with my mates and we were like, we just do one, two, three, four, and then dash. And some of them said, oh, one of them said, what? What do you mean? And I said, well, if you did this, it's harder to read. Whereas if you actually did this, one, two, three, four, five, you know how many numbers you actually have, which was interesting to me. I thought we all knew this. So just in case, tallies, we normally do one, two, three, four, slash is the fifth one. Okay, so then when you go into the next one, that means six. Okay, so if I do, that's five, the next one, that's now six. Okay. So what they want you to do is to construct a frequency table. How do you do it? This is a frequency table. You need a title. Frequency is always the last column. Okay, it's always the last column. So you want to be able to summarize that. So here, if I would do a frequency table, notice what am I measuring? I'm measuring the car colors. 
So you can write car colors as one section. So car colors, or you can write car colors. This is one column. What are the colors that I have? I have white. I have black. I have blue. I have red. And I have yellow. Okay. We do traditionally use a ruler. So at the year 12 level, we do use rulers uh, to, especially when you're doing graphs, you get penalized uh, at the exams if you don't use rulers. So please get in the habit of using a ruler or something that is straight. Sometimes you can just use uh, part of your calculator case as well or the binder of your textbook or exercise book. I do want you to use a ruler to draw out your graphs. Okay, so here in this case, I've got colors, car colors, and then frequency. Okay, you can do F-R-E-Q for freq. So frequency, put a dot there. And then now, how many whites do we have? So looking at the tally table, we have three. So then we write the number three. How many for black do I have there? Let's go with Ashley. How many for black? We've got 13 cars, very good. So we can see two groups of fives that make 10 with an extra three is 13. What about blue? Let's go with James. How many cars for blue? 17. 17, very good. What about red? Let's go with Blaze. Six is correct. Jack? Nine, very good. Now, usually as well in a frequency table, we usually also put the total. At the very bottom okay so total that tells you how many cars that you can expect while looking at that also means you can change this into a percentage you can ch uh, change it into a fraction if you wanted to as well so you need the total what is the total here we've got 3 plus 17 is 20 20 plus 13 which is now 33 33 plus 6 is 39 39 plus 9 48 very good just testing your addition okay so we got 48 cars in total now, if there are questions that asks you to change it to a percentage, which right now there isn't, but if I did do one that was a percentage table, how do you work out the percentage of cars that are white? How would you do that? It's 3 out of 48. This is your fraction. And how do you change anything, a fraction, decimal to a percentage? What is the technique? Times it by? 100, that's it. Anything to a percentage times by 100, that's it. If you've got a decimal, say 0 0.31 times that by 100, you get 31%. Okay, so even if it's a fraction, if you want to know how to change it to percentage, it changes that fraction by multiplying by 100. So say if you got 78 out of 81 for your F4 MTs, you want to know your percentage times that by 100 on your calculator, and that changes to a percentage. Okay, so that's only if there are questions that ask about percentages. At the moment, I don't think at a year eight level we could we'd be doing that. But if they do ask for it, that's how you convert it. So that's why you need to know the total. It's three out of the total times by 100 to get to percentage. What's the next type of question? And I'll get you to practice 8B. Remember, I've selected questions, but you don't have to do them all. It's about choosing what you don't know. Work on the questions so that we can move on. Okay, so if you know them, you know them. If you don't, practice. Here we go. Constructing tables from data. So instead of them giving you a tally table before now, they want you to construct... Ooh, where'd that go? They want you to construct a frequency table. This is a frequency table. They want you to do that so it summarizes the data. Now, if you have a look at this, we don't know what that column represents. It just says put the following data into a frequency table. So if I were to do... A frequency table, I might just call this data frequency, right? But looking at your data now, it's very mumble jumbled. It's not organized. You need to organize them. Now I can see I've got a one, 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 one. So clearly part of my data, how many ones did I have? Six. So how do you do it? Again, same thing, do a tally table. Make yourself organized, okay? So all of these tables are meant to help you organize your information. So I'm going to write here tally table. So tally table, I've got number one. 
Under one, we had one, two, three, four, slash, so that's six now. Number two, do I have any twos? Let's see, twos. I've got one, two over here. I'm going to do another color. There's one, two here, two twos there. So I'm going to write down one, two. No more twos. Let's go into three. How many threes do I have? Let's count. One. Looks like I only got one, actually. Yeah, you're right. Four. How many fours do I have? Three. Yeah, I should use this color here. So one, two, three. Yes, you're right. One, two, and three. And then how many fives do I have? One. Yes, you're right. That is one. So one, five. And how many sixes do I have? One. I only see one. There you go. Okay, so now that we've got a total list here, we can then write our data as one, two, three, four, five, and six. Write our frequency. Clearly we had six for one, two for two, one for three, three for four, one and one. Don't forget to do the total as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this just so it looks a bit nicer. Here we go, I'm just gonna move this across. And just to do it as an example, I do want you to rule this line as well. So I'm gonna do it, here we go. Ruler one and 90 degrees, here we go. Here we go. Total, what's the total here? I love it, I love it. That's how critical I want you to be when you're doing mathematics, especially in the senior levels, we need to be clear. So we've got six, two, one, three, one, one. How many, what's the total there? 14. Uh, yes, you're right, it is 14. 14, there you go. So if they want you to convert it to percentage, then you know how to change it to percentage. But that's organizing data. So that's mumble jumble data. That tells you information, but this helps you at a glance which one is the most popular number. So here I can tell straight away it's one. Which ones have an, uh, equal numbers? You got three, five, and six. Drawing a graph is 8C, okay? This is what I want you to do. This is exercise 8B. I've only selected five questions. There's one, three, four, five, and seven. But like I said, maybe one and three is similar. Four and five could be similar, and seven is different. Okay, so you could be doing one, three, or one, four, or you could do one, five, and seven, or do three, five, seven, if you want. But one and, one and three should be similar. Oh, sorry, one, three, and four. Five, I think it was. I can't remember. I made some that are similar. But I want you to work on 8B. Question one to four, one, three, four, five, seven. I'll write it here. Question one, three, four, five, seven. Okay? That's for 8B. Yo. I'm gonna stop the video.